Number 6,000. The King George V. These are professional railway men who come to Bulmer's sidings in Hereford to play trains. Ever since British Rail dispensed with steam locomotives and went over to diesel and electric, many railwaymen's lives have become less satisfying because steam engines demanded a technique and an understanding which diesels and electric locomotives do not. Steam engines have a personality and there's the sound. rail used 10 million tons of best coal every year. Today, despite the diesels, the railways still burn coal, but now in the form of electricity. And the king himself burns about a ton an hour when he's under steam. King George V was designed and planned by 1927. At the same time, the Southern Railway had already built the Lord Nelson, which they claimed the most powerful in the world. And as such, the Lord Nelson was due to go to America as Britain's representative at the Fair of the Iron Horse. Great Western's pride couldn't permit this. And so, the King was built and tested and shipped to Baltimore, all in the space of about four months. The American Bell commemorates the voyage. The Fair of the Iron Horse was organized by the Baltimore and Ohio Railway to celebrate its centenary. American railroad companies sent their oldest and they sent their best. mother of the railway was represented by a replica of Stevenson's rocket with Britannia in attendance and by King George V. After the ballyhoo of the American visit King George V returned to Britain to be welcomed by the railway queen and then entered service to earn a living. In the late 1920s, the Great Western Railway decided to accelerate and to increase the size of trains in order to handle the expanding West of England traffic. Previously, these trains had been hauled by castle-class engines. So, out of the castle came the king the same engine in principle, 
but much bigger and much more powerful. The Swindon locomotive shops could always take pride in their workmanship. The engineers and craftsmen there loved and respected their locomotives. There was a sense of involvement, of identification with the machinery they built. This was the state of mind that produced magnificent locomotives, so well made that people used to believe in what they called Wiltshire magic. Of course there was craftsmanship there. I, I honestly think that the Great Western could always level out and take place of honour with their locomotives. If you saw as I'd seen them when we get prototypes come off, well those chaps are so proud when that engine came out, went to the shed and went to Bristol. Every jack soul was out there, 15,000 men were watching that engine go by. And you couldn't see the factory for faces. That's how, how they just enjoyed their work and just how proud they were of the work. Where a steam engine, every part was made in the railway works and assembled in the railway works, it isn't now. So, of course, there's no interest in it, is there, to the men? Well, they can't say, I, I built that engine, which they could say in the days gone by. But the steam age came to an end. As far as the kings were concerned, in 1965. George V was to have been preserved as a museum piece by the Swindon Corporation. But Bulmers of Hereford had available about a mile and a half of siding, which would permit the King to remain a living steam locomotive. have also carefully adapted and restored to use a number of Pullman coaches. Together with them, the King is waiting for the day when British Rail's policy may change, to permit steam to return to the tracks where it belongs, perhaps to haul special trains. lovers everywhere will be happy in the knowledge that right in the West Country, the home of the kings, King George V is alive and on steam.